I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone. Yes, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, a sure foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation unto the Lord. Well, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone. Yes, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, a sure foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation unto the Lord. Well, welcome to the reading of the Word of God. We are doing the One Year Bible, if you're new to visit here, and it is all broken up in sections of a portion of the Old Testament, New Testament, a Psalm, and a Proverb for every day of the year. So we are up to November 23, November 23. And I am, an away, I am away from South Carolina in California, which makes three hours difference. So I'm pre-recording the night before, because I really don't care to get up at four in the morning, nor does the family want me to interrupt them, right? So this is for November 23. We will be reading from Ezekiel Yehezkel, chapter 45, picking up with verse 13, okay? Picking up with 13. We've already started it yesterday. This is the offering which you shall offer. You shall give one-sixth of an ephah from a homer of wheat and one-sixth of an ephah from a homer of barley. The ordinance concerning oil, the bath of oil, is one tenth of a bath from a core. And these are all measurement names that in America we're not all that familiar with. We don't use, so you might want to look these up. A core is a homer or 10 baths. For 10 baths are a homer. And one lamb shall be given from a flock of 200 from the rich pastures of Israel. These shall be for grain offerings, burnt offerings, and peace offerings to make atonement for them, says the Lord God. All the people of the land shall give this offering for the prince in Israel. And then it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings, grain offerings, and drink offerings at the feasts, the new moons, the Sabbaths, and at all the appointed seasons of the house of Israel. He shall prepare the sin offering, the grain offering, the burnt offering, and the peace offerings to make atonement for the house of Israel. And this is the way it was in the old covenant, right? Thus says the Lord God, in the first month, on the first day of the month, you shall take a young bull without blemish and cleanse the sanctuary. The priest shall take some of the blood of the sin offering and put it on the doorposts of the temple and on the four corners of the ledge of the altar and on the gateposts of the gate of the inner court. And so you shall do on the seventh day of the month for everyone who has sinned unintentionally, <clears throat> unintentionally, or in ignorance. Thus you shall make atonement for the temple. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month, you shall observe the Passover. 
a feast of seven days. Unleavened bread shall be eaten. And on that day, the prince shall prepare for himself and for all the people of the land a bowl for a sin offering. On the seven days of the feast, he shall prepare a burnt offering to the Lord, seven bulls and seven rams without blemish, daily for seven days, and a kid of the goats daily for a sin offering. And he shall prepare a grain offering of one ephah for each bull and one ephah for each ram, together with a hin of oil for each ephah. In the seventh month, on the fifteenth day of the month, uh, at the feast, he shall do likewise for seven days, according to the sin offering, the burnt offering, the grain offering, and the oil. And we move right along to chapter 46 of Ezekiel, Ezekiel, Yehezkel. Thus says the Lord God, the gateway of the inner court that faces toward the east shall be shut the six working days. But on the Sabbath, on the seventh, it shall be opened. And on the day of the new moon, it shall be opened. The prince shall enter by way of the vestibule of the gateway from the outside and stand by the gatepost. The priest shall prepare his burnt offering and his peace offerings. He shall worship at the threshold of the gate. Ah, welcome Scott. Welcome Scott. Good evening. Then he shall go out, but the gate shall not be shut until evening. And we are going to welcome all that you can enlarge and enlighten us, Scott, from the word. Likewise, the people of the land shall worship at the entrance to this gateway before the Lord on the Sabbaths and the new moons. The burnt offering that the prince offers to the Lord on the Sabbath day shall be six lambs without blemish and a ram without blemish. And the grain offering shall be one ephah for a lamb and the grain offering for the lambs as much as he wants to give as well as a hin of oil with every ephah. On the day of the new moon, it shall be a young bull without blemish, six lambs and a ram. They shall be without blemish. He shall prepare a grain offering of an ephah for a bull, an ephah for a ram, as much as he wants to give for the lambs, and a hin of oil with every ephah. When the prince enters, and Scott, you had given such an interesting um, explanation of their use of the word prince. Maybe you could do that again, since we seem to be saying it often here. When the prince enters, he shall go in by way of the vestibule of the gateway and go out the same way. But when the people of the land come before the Lord on the appointed feast days, whoever enters by the way of the north gate to worship shall go out by way of the south gate. And whoever enters by way of the south gate shall go out by the way of the north gate. He shall not return by way of the gate through which he came, but shall go out through the opposite gate. The prince shall then be in their midst. When they go in, he shall go in. And when they go out, he shall go out. At the festivals and the appointed feast days, the grain offering shall be an ephah for a bull, an ephah for a ram, as much as he wants to give for the lambs, and a hin of oil with every ephah. 
Now, when the prince makes a voluntary burnt offering or voluntary prince offering to the Lord, the gate that faces toward the east shall then be opened for him, and he shall prepare his burnt offering and his peace offerings as he did on the Sabbath day. And then he shall go out. And after he goes out, the gate shall be shut. You shall daily make a burnt offering to the Lord of a lamb of the first year without blemish. You shall prepare it every morning. And you shall prepare a grain offering with it every morning. A sixth of an ephah and a third of a hin of oil to moisten the fine flour. This grain offering is a perpetual ordinance to be made regularly to the Lord. Thus they shall prepare the lamb, the grain offering, and the oil as a regular burnt offering every morning. Thus says the Lord God, if the prince gives a gift of some of his inheritance to any of his sons, it shall belong to his sons. It is their possession by inheritance. But if he gives a gift of some of his inheritance to one of his servants, it shall be his until the year of liberty, after which it shall return to the prince. But his inheritance shall belong to his sons. It shall become theirs. Moreover, the prince shall not take any of the people's inheritance by evicting them from their property. He shall provide an inheritance for his sons from his own property, so that none of my people may be scattered from his property. Now, he brought me, Ezekiel, through the entrance, which was at the side of the gate, into the holy chambers of the priests, which face toward the north. And there a place was situated at their extreme western end. And he said to me, This is the place where the priests shall boil the trespass offering, and the sin offering, and where they shall bake the grain offering, so that they do not bring them out into the outer court to sanctify the people. And then he brought me out info into the outer court and caused me to pass by the four corners of the court. And in fact, in every corner of the court, there was another court. In the four corners of the court were enclosed courts, 40 cubits long and 30 wide. All four corners were the same size. There was a row of building stones all around them, all around the four of them, and cooking hearths were made under the rows of stones all around. And he said to me, These are the kitchens where the ministers of the temple shall boil the sacrifices of the people. How about that? We are getting all the details of what they did, and they followed the details of the Word of God. All right, y'all, we'll move along to the New Testament, and we will be reading 1 Peter 1. 1 Peter beginning with one. Therefore, Peter says, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts, as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, because it is written, 
Be holy, for I am holy. And that was from Leviticus 11, 44 and 45. Be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father, who without partiality judges according to each one's work, Conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish, and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest, manifest in these last times for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and your hope are in God. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever because, and we are going to quote here um, from Isaiah 40, all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers and its flower falls away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. Wow, can we get a hold of that? The word of the Lord endures forever. And that's Isaiah 40, 6 through 8. Now this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. And we move along to chapter 2 of First Peter. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Coming to him is to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture I lay in Zion, Zion, uh, for a foundation, a stone. Yes, I lay in Zion, for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, a sure foundation, a tried stone. A precious cornerstone, a sure foundation unto the Lord. And he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, disobedient, we will quote from... Uh, Psalm 118, 
22. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. And also from the word, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble, being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. But you, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people who have called forth the praises of God out of darkness, out of darkness, out of darkness, out of darkness into his marvelous light, into his marvelous light. And that's what he calls us, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Oh, hallelujah. That is just shouting good news. And we will move right along here to Psalm 119, and we will pick up with verse 33, Psalm 119, verse 33. And as I ex said before, uh, we are reading and every portion of scripture has the next Hebrew letter. And so we are up to, hey, hey, teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. Indeed, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me walk in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Incline my heart to your testimonies, and not to covetousness. Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things and revive me in your way. Establish your word to your servant who is devoted to fearing you. Turn away my reproach, which I dread, for your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your precepts. Revive me in your righteousness. And we move along to Vav, Vav. Let your mercies come also to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your word. So shall I have an answer for him who reproaches me. For I trust in your word and take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth. For I have hoped in your ordinances, so I shall keep your law continually forever and ever. And I will walk at liberty, for I seek your precepts. I will speak of your testimonies also before kings and will not be ashamed. And I will delight myself in your commandments, which I love. My hands also, I will lift up to your commandments, which I love, and I will meditate on your statutes. Oh, what a beautiful section of scripture. I just hope that you will go back over that and read it out loud with your own voice. Let your ears hear your own voice, for faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
All right, we wrap up today's reading, y'all, with Proverbs 28, 11. 28, 11. The rich man is wise in his own eyes, but the poor who has understanding searches him out. Searches him out. Oh boy, there's a lot of truth and encouragement, I think, in that proverb. Well, I pray that you all were excited about the Word of God, as excited as I am, and that you will pick up your Bible and you will reread, you will go over it for yourself and get into a good, con consistent habit of reading the Word of God. That's the main point for my trying to be consistent, to be here and read through the entire Bible. Let's close in prayer. Let's close in prayer. Father God, we are so grateful to you for your word. Your word, Lord, it just jumps alive off the page. And it fills us. It blesses our spirit. It just causes us to be renewed. Our minds are renewed. Our hearts are uplifted and comforted. Fear and anxiety just melt away at the reading of your word. It fills the very atmosphere of where we are. And we are so grateful, Holy Spirit. We are so grateful to you to reveal to us, to encourage us and get us excited and hunger and thirst for more of the word of God. Father God, we hold up Israel we pray for the peace of Yerushalayim, Jerusalem, we would say in America. We pray for her peace, surrounded by enemies who hate her, who are being led by Satan's ways. Some of them, I think, are doing all this hating, and I don't think they even really know why. It's just how they're being reared, the atmosphere they're in. So, Lord, we would ask that you would knock on their hearts, that you would supernaturally bring ways of people into their lives to witness to them, to bring the good news, to bring the good news to them. So many people, so discouraged, hungry, destitute, Father God, we just ask that you carry your word everywhere by these many ministries that you have reared up. You have raised them up to proclaim you, and we exalt you. We exalt the Son of God, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ of Nazareth. We hold up America, Lord, and I encourage you to hold up other countries, please. Hold up other countries, those that you know about. Hold up the leadership. And precious Lord, we are grateful. We are grateful for all that we have in America. We are winding ourselves up here to a great Thanksgiving day. And Lord, we are thankful. We are thankful. And Lord, I'm asking too that people are stirred, that all who are listening in this prayer time, that you will be stirred to pray at your Thanksgiving gathering. Maybe that's never happened before. But I doubt anybody will object if you just say, could I say a prayer and bless the food? And then just go ahead. Don't make it a discussion. Just make it a fact in a loving way that you do. And let us be very grateful in this blessed country. We thank you, Lord, that you are revealing many truths this day. You are uncovering deceit and crime and awful things that have happened. We praise you, Lord, because we are looking for your will, your will. 
And we're asking you to cause Holy Spirit to speak to us and to direct our path. We hold up, Lord, all of our prayer requests. We hold up friends and relatives who are ill. We hold up people who are discouraged. We hold up those and ask you to show us what we could do to be a blessing in their lives. And we will give you all the thanks and all the glory in the name of the Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach. And all of God's people cried, so be it. Amen. And go right on with your reading, your studying, your prayers. I love you all so much. Thank you for coming. Be blessed. Bye-bye.